welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator 24. Nowadays, I'm exploring the Pilatus uh, PC24 and in this regard, I'm planning to make a series of videos of this plane so that I can just break down all the information related to a flight into different videos which will make it easy for you to look for a specific information on my channel. So initially, I will upload three videos in which I will tell you how to start this plane from the cold and dark state and how to configure the FMS, uh, then how to fly this plane on autopilot and in the last, I will upload a video in which I will show you how to perform ILS approach and landing. So today I will be doing the short flight from uh, Heathrow to Manchester and here is this plane, one of uh, uh, the good looking planes in the Microsoft Flight Simulator and uh, you will really enjoy uh, flights uh, with it because uh, it's got uh, twin jet engines and if you are used to uh, the Cirrus uh, Vision G2 then uh, you will really enjoy flying it because it's got more power. So initially let's uh, remove uh, the pins and the chocks and the covers for the engines and uh, let's get inside the plane so this is the cockpit and uh, it has a very nice and sleek design not uh, so many controls just uh, some uh, big screens over here you have the prime flight display on the left hand side and on the right hand side then you have the navigation display and this is the cast which is a crew alerting system you will also get alerts over here and plus uh, the aircraft status uh, will be shown over here. Before you start this plane, just make sure that uh, the thrust levers are in the idle position. And uh, then this is the speed brake. This is disengaged. And uh, plus uh, flaps are also retracted. The flaps are retracted? No, they were not, but now they are. <laughs> okay. So, uh, in the last, just check uh, that uh, the gear lever is down. That's it. Now let's uh, get some power in the plane. Over, over here on the overhead panel, you will see these two switches for the battery 1 and for the battery 2. And uh, now the prime flight display and the navigation display will be up. So before I begin, let's uh, do the fuel for this plane. Just go over here in the EFB. You can bring it up by pressing the tab button on your keyboard. And then you have the flight performance and mass and balance and in the fuel. You can adjust the fuel, so either in pounds or gallons, you can also change the units in the settings. So I will be carrying some extra fuel for this uh, flight, as I'm not paying it from my pocket, <laughs> so I can just carry as much fuel as I can. That's it. Now, as the fueling is done, you can uh, turn on uh, the seatbelt signs and the no smoking sign as well. Although during uh, the fueling, the no smoking sign should be on. <laughs> Now you have uh, the nav and logo light. You have to turn it on. Nav lights are required before you start the plane. And plus, uh, turn on the beacon. It's actually a light which tells the ground staff that you're going to start the plane. That's it. Now it's uh, time to turn on the oxygen. You will see this control over here. So push to activate. And that's it. Just lift click. And now let's start the right engine. You see this uh, switch. Just move it to run. Click it and then start the right engine. And now you will see the right engine is running. Looks really nice. And these engines have got some good power. Once you are flying it, you will notice the power. I'll just look at the graphics. They're amazing. Okay. Now, uh, in order to save time, I will just turn on the left engine also, engine 1. I'll just move the switch to run and then press start. And now you have engine 2 running as well. Now this engine is stabilizing. Let's wait for this engine to stabilize and then I can turn on the generators. And when I will turn on the generators, this prime flight display and the gas will also turn on. And then I will just set the flaps and everything for the flight and that's it. So it's really easy to uh, start this plane from the cold and dark state. It's not that uh, difficult.
now the engine one is also stable so i can turn on the generator one and generator two now you will see the plane has got the power from the engines and everything is just up and running now on the cast you will see that uh, this uh, start trim this option is red you have to set the trim of uh, the elevators for the takeoff whether to pitch up or down so it automatically calculates uh, the trim and this is a green area you have to keep this plane within this limit so on my controllers i'm actually using uh, the thrustmaster dc side stick the abus edition and uh, you can see these two buttons i have actually configured them for the trim for the pitch up and down so i will just pitch up and i will just keep it in the middle let's say i, I can keep it at 2.5 degrees up you can just uh, set it within this green threshold that's it now let's uh, set the flaps for the takeoff just uh, extend them by one position or eight degrees that's it now you have the flaps and everything in the last you have to adjust the altimeter this is the barometric pressure right now it's set to standard but if i press comma on my keyboard you will see that now we have the actual barometric pressure and the altimeter is adjusted now as everything is done and you will be preparing for the flight you have to enter the flight plan in the fms so this is the fms let's bring the tab and make the flight plan over here in this tab so departure is from heathrow and arrival is manchester uh, runway 27 right is in use so let's keep it like this and uh, the departure is omla 1f change procedure and uh, let's uh, first of all find the routes oh sorry the waypoints for the route <laughs> not the routes and uh, let's uh, select arrival elvo 1m direct and uh, change procedure and uh, this is why mcd that's it so i have a complete uh, video on my channel in which i have shown you how to make a flight plan over here in the efb so if you're not really familiar with this process i will give you the link in the description you can just go and follow that link otherwise we can just proceed further so and right now this flight plan is there as you can see this flight plan is correct now there are two ways of entering this uh, flight plan in the fms let me just go back and set the altitude as well mostly people actually ask me questions about it so let me just adjust it to flight level 200 which is 20000 feet actually i don't uh, configure uh, this altitude over here because you know you set it in the plane so no need to even set it over here because altitude is primarily uh, required for the fuel calculation so if you're making flight plans at the same brief then it will make a difference because obviously if you're cru cruising at a higher altitude less fuel will be burned but still you need fuel to climb up to that altitude that's why it matters a lot so uh, you can send this uh, flight plan uh, to the fms by clicking this option send route to avionics and that's it and then you can just activate and this uh, flight plan is there you can just bring your mouse over here and just move it up and down you can see the flight plan and if you see any discontinuity you can delete it so this is the discontinuity click it and you will see this option delete waypoint and just activate and then i think there is another discontinuity which is over here so i can also delete this that's it and activate now this flight plan is there without any discontinuity or although you can just fly this uh, flight without with the discontinuity based on the heading so uh, once you're in the nav mode um, this what i will explain it to you in uh, the next video in which i will tell you how to fly this plane on autopilot but just for your information if there is a discontinuity then you can just fly it based on the heading and then you can arm the nav mode and once the plane reaches the next waypoint from where the flight plan starts then the plane will automatically start following this flight plan so that's it so it was really easy to configure the fms now <laughs> if you want to manually enter this flight plan because i know um, mostly you guys will be using it for the career mode and in the career mode you have to select 
the, the maybe the departure or the arrival and the approach. So for this, I will just enter this flight plan again and show it to you and how you will enter it. So go to this option over here for this flight and you will see flight plan. So once you will enter the departure and the, uh, the destination or the arrival airport, this uh, flight plan will get reset. So if I enter EGLL again over here, oh no, I cannot use my keyboard. I have to do it from here. So EGLL, enter and uh, destination is EGCC. Enter and insert. Now this flight plan is again there and you can just activate it. Now you will see it's a straight line. But there is no departure procedure or the arrival procedure or these waypoints. So I can just enter them. Bring your cursor over here and left click. It's a touch screen so you can interact with it. And now you have the option of uh, amending the shoot. You have the option of selecting the departure and the arrival. You can also select the departure and arrival from uh, this point. So let's say if I want to select the departure from here. So let's select the departure. It was 27 right, if I'm not wrong, and Umla 1F. Let's select and insert and activate. Now the departure procedure is there. That's it. And if I go to this option for the descent and uh, if I go to this option, then I have the option of selecting the star, which is standard terminal arrival, and plus approach will also be selected. So runway is 23 right. Approach is ILS 23 right. Now, instead of vectors, I will be flying here with this option, MCD. If you select vectors, then again, you will uh, see a discontinuity in the flight plan. And after this, uh, you have to fly based on the heading. And then once the plane is back on uh, the flight plan, it will start to fly in the nav mode. So LO1M, let's select LO1M and insert and activate. Now again, after Umland, this uh, the departure and LWAS, there is a discontinuity. Now the, you can disc, uh, uh, delete, <laughs> the, you can discontinuity the delete. This was a good one, okay. So you can delete this discontinuity or you can enter the waypoints over here after Umland because after Umland, these are the waypoints the plane will actually go through. So I can click Umland and uh, then I can select this option, amend route. And once this amend route is here, then I can just start entering uh, the waypoints. So I can click this uh, text box and you can see this keyboard sign, just click it and click over here again. This color will change from cyan to magenta and now you can use the keyboard. So it's uh, woven. This is how you can enter it. Enter. The next waypoint is wheeling. I will just quickly enter all the waypoints. And that's it. So TNT is the last one. I can just enter. And uh, now it's asking uh, for the heading. So, oh, sorry, um, asking me to actually select uh, the one in this flight plan. And it's showing me the GPS coordinates. Let me just check. This is, if I get the more info. Yes, this is the one. So let's uh, select it, the first one, and activate. And that's it. Now this flight plan is there. And again, there is a discontinuity. So you can just delete this discontinuity over here. Delete waypoint, activate, and that's it. Even it was, you know, clear from the name, Trent, but just to show you that if you get confused, then how you can make sure that you're getting the right waypoint by checking the position of the GPS coordinates. And uh, there's another discontinuity. No, I think it was the same one I didn't delete. Okay. So now this flight plan is there. Now there are a few more things that you have to check. If you go to this option and altitude and speed. So this is uh, the speed at the cruising altitude. You can change it, click it. Uh, you can use uh, now again, uh, this uh, screen for the input. 
or you can just go back and click this and uh, you will have your keyboard so i can just change it to let's say 200 or 240 whatever i want and uh, the cruising altitude will be flight level 250 so for this flight i'm going at 200 so i will just enter flight level 200 or 20,000 feet that's it now for the takeoff this is actually the speed we are at which you will rotate you will just uh, pull back on the yoke and take this plane up in the air and uh, this is uh, the speed for the climb so you can change it you can keep it 150 or 160 or 170 uh, but this is calculated by the, uh, the fms so let's keep it over here if you keep it at 140 you will see that this plane will have a very good uh, rate of climb and you can just send it and that's it and uh, this, this is these are the settings for the descent and uh, this is the approach 85 although it's not applicable if uh, during the approach you go less than 110 knots it's a disaster <laughs> i will show it to you in the video in, in which i will explain the ILS approach and landing and now over here you will see uh, for the departure uh, you have this transition altitude so this is uh, the altitude i was talking to you about that you have to change the barometric pressure from the standard from the given one to the standard so for Heathrow, uh, if you go over here and uh, you open the charts and departure for 27 right and uh, this is the one it's already highlighted green so let's open this uh, chart and uh, let's zoom in you will see it's a uh, 6000 transition altitude TM. so let's enter 6000 still it's uh, in magenta color i can use my keyboard but if it's not in magenta color then you have to use this keyboard six one two three and thousand six thousand feet and that's it and activate now the flight plan is there uh, there is one more thing i want to add a few days back i just uploaded a video related to pc12 when somebody was asking can we see the terrain over here on the pfd if you want to see it just go to this option overlay and uh, just turn this option on svs on and that's it so now you will see the terrain over here in the prime flight display so this was a simple uh, video uh, which will show which has shown you how to start this plane from the cold and dark state and how to configure the fms for this flight if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment section or if you want to add uh, anything to this video the comment section is there for you Thank you very much for watching it. Have a nice day. Hope to see you soon.